I'm looking forward for people seeing the pigeons in the game more than anything else. I think that and the ending on an equal. You know. If they see the pigeon, <laughs> yeah. If they see the pigeon and they don't get to the end of the game, I think it'll be all right as long as I've seen the pigeons. <laughs> The game is currently, it's basically, basically pens down on everything design related. Character creation's been done, narrative was finished, uh, VO is, is, I think I said in the last video, it was done. And so the game is at a stage where technically it is pens down, but imagine if you were in an exam and the teacher left the room for a second after saying pens down, and I'm just going to change that score a little bit. We're kind of at that stage where there's still a little bit of wiggle room just to make sure that timings and polish and um, video lines and music and volumes and just little, little things that you just want the game to be as good as it can possibly be for the player. Josh and I have actually just come from a, a big, big group playtest where we've been writing down like a huge list. You know, we have a company um, outsourced that do, you know, extensive game testing, looking for huge breakers, looking for platform issues. We can also request what we want them to look at as well. So for instance, if we've just made some grand changes to something and we know that it could be uh, the, the risk of more bugs happening in that area because we've made changes, we can ask them to focus onto certain areas which has been really helpful as well it's very easy to go so you go into this room and then you go through that door and then you pick up that key and then you use that key to do this and that's the how you're you know because that's how to complete the level when you know josh and p implement that they they try and polish the steps to make sure that everything's working <laughs> and then the first thing that happens <laughs> like the first thing that happens is someone goes into the room and instead of picking up the thing they go left and you're like go to the thing. Josh is messaging me again, why aren't they going to the thing? <laughs> I'm messaging you, should we have a sign that says go to the thing? No, we'll just let, let another play. And it's not that the player isn't obviously clever enough to do it, it's that the player is inquisitive and doesn't know the rules. Um, and so much of getting someone to go to the thing is establishing the rules here and trying not to break them. And it's, it's so easy for any one thing to then get put in which makes someone go, oh, this thing's here. I bet it's this. And you're like, oh, why did we put that in? No, it's nothing to do with that. I know that I don't want the music to be that loud. And that's too loud for me. And I know that I want it to end earlier. And I feel like, you know, this. And, and Josh is like, that shouldn't be happening there. That should happen before that. And the player probably doesn't care too much if it happens that way. But we know what we want to deliver. And if we don't, we'll be sad. Yeah, it's really just us as a team, just seeing what are those small changes. So for, for me, it is, you know, a, a second delay here and there to make sure that those moments just deliver correctly. Uh, obviously, as we are playing, we're finding, I guess, grander bugs, which is a good thing because we can get rid of those now. But this playtest is all about trying to find those small, small things that we can change that we know about just to help make this experience just that little bit tighter in this whole kind of development of this game. I think NJ is the person I spent the most time with, um, just because NJ has, you know, <laughs> everything narrative is through NJ. You know, the amount of questions that NJ gets from everyone across the team, just making sure that it fits the thread or it fits the story or it fits the tone. And then, so for me, from, uh, I guess, the designer, making sure that the levels fit that thread and that tone as well. That's why I'm constantly in communication with NJ with uh, any VO that needs to be implemented. Um, me and NJ have to have conversations. We have to import all the the audio into the engine. The sound effects stuff, there's a lot of, um, I guess, things that NJ can do by himself because Martin has given the tools to do so. But other times, um, as a designer, things are fired in a certain place. And that's then when me and NJ need to talk I don't use blueprints the way um, Josh and Pete do. Um, like I know what blueprints are, I know how to use them to a degree, but when Josh has made a complex blueprint, I don't go into it and go, uh, so I'll well, do this and sound then it's yeah. fine. So I say to Josh, look, this is the sound that for that, and Josh goes, okay, they can hear, and we do it together, and literally Josh is the uh, kind of the orchestrator of all of that. 
and I look at it and scratch my head and say, I think the sound should play two seconds later. And he goes, okay, cool. Um, and I haven't made most of those systems. Like we say, like when someone like me says, so the guy in this scene does the naughty thing and this person reacts, it's, it's up to people like um, Josh to, to actually implement all of that to the you know, desired way. Yeah, I, I just can't do that stuff. And and the, the like Josh was saying, I do get a lot of questions and I do get, a, and there's a lot of other stuff to do. So I've kind of shifted more to that side and the, it's a marriage between us now. Is that too strong oh, that's a word? Nice. That that's nice. That's a beautiful way of putting it. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm the, oh, should it be full name or just, it should be full name, shouldn't it? I'll start again. See, Martin's already grinning because he knows how this is, this is how it always goes down every time. I won't get into the anecdotes. Dave yeah. was the was the original programmer at the studio. Um, so Dave did Ether and then I came in. But when I actually joined the studio, I thought Dave was still at the studio. I didn't realize he wasn't there because oh. I didn't have a huge amount of experience in Unreal. So I was like, oh, it's fine. because I'll be working under someone who knows Unreal and I can just pick stuff up from then. It was like, nope, you're the only programmer now. So I was like, oh, OK. Um, yeah, but then basically Dave came in for the platform stuff. Uh, on the tail end of um, occupation. I was also there for obviously daily view. And at the moment, we're right up against what a lot of devs would call master, which is essentially the version that you release that will essentially go public. Sometimes it's actually quite an enjoyable process because it's that same moment where the team comes together and you actually start seeing the game in a, in a polished state. And it's actually quite an enjoyable sensation of playing through and being like, oh my. God, like this is actually, this looks like a game now. Like the last time I saw this, because as a programmer, you very often end up in just these kind of like playground test scenes, which are just all white boxes with things randomly hanging about in here because you're just worried about whether or not this feature functions. And you're not actually seeing these implementations in level because if you're just trying to work out whether or not, I don't know, the character can go up a slope, you'll just put them next to a slope. You won't go into the level where the slope actually is because that you might you might that might take five minutes to get to that place. So it's quite, you know, it, it becomes a little bit abstract and you get removed from actually just seeing the game the way it is in these final states. And when you're seeing these actual finished builds with like built lighting, it's actually quite exciting to see everything coming together and the, the music's finally there. And like, there's actually a sense of like cinema to things that are going on. All of the different game platforms that people use have their own quirks. You really do have to follow these rules to the letter and then some. Um, and some of these, um, like these rule sheets and these documents, these requirements checklists, they run into like the hundreds of pages and they have like multiple pages of test cases and things. And it's not the sort of thing where you can just like throw the game out to QA and hope for the best and like go, oh yeah, they'll catch it all. No, you really have to be thinking about this stuff like pretty much from the point of where you had a main production. Because if you leave it any later, then you end up in a situation where it's like, oh no, like, what happens if the user isn't signed in here? And all of a sudden you have to rebuild like the entire like underpinning of what your game is um, in order to actually get that to function and meet their requirements. In the past, so we did Ether 1 first. So that was like PC, but then it was PlayStation 4. And then we did the occupation, which was PC, PS4, and Xbox One as a simultaneous release. And now this time with Conway, it's like Switch, you've got Xbox One, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, PC, like six platforms to handle all at once. And every single platform is unique in its own way. I think especially across perhaps like the indie space, um, the teams that are perhaps working on like their first title or two, like they massively underestimate like the time that it takes to do all this sort of stuff. It is quite an intense period. Um, however, I had a really good week last week and I crushed a whole bunch of Xbox issues that we were having. Um, so I'm feeling pretty confident at the moment um, that we're gonna have like a relatively smooth like go through a platform QA. As soon as you expand that from a testing company team of like 10 people to, I don't know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people, depending on how many people check it out, 
it's just you're just painfully aware of all the things that could go wrong so i think from quite a programmer specific point of view you're gonna get a definite level of like fear and worry that things are just things are just gonna get caught that you just couldn't even possibly account for you know that's that's the reality of the way the industry is now is that's what patches are there for is to kind of like if any weird stuff comes up or certainly when you're dealing with anything on a PC, you will never be able to account for the different platforms that people can play on. And suddenly someone's trying to play it on a 200 by 200 resolution monitor and it's like, I didn't realize those ever existed. And it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm trying to play it on this shoe. Can you, like, why doesn't it work on my shoe? Um, so, and you just have to deal with the realities of that. So that's always going to happen. So, you know, and I think the more releases we get, the more you kind of get used to that. And I, I'm certainly feeling that now, but it's still quite a bit of dread, but exposing it to like, you know, thousands of people. Mm -hmm.